All right, so today we are talking about the two to three relationship in rhythm. Now, I want to give a quick shout out um, before I dig in too much. I used some visuals and some information from this awesome book right here called The Clavi Matrix. This is by David Benalosa. And um, I studied a little bit with him while I was at Humboldt State University. And if you want to nerd out on clave, rhythmic relationships, um, I strongly recommend checking out this book. I put a link in the video description here to uh, where you can get it on Amazon. Um, this book is absolutely amazing and there's such cool information in it. So check it out if you are into this kind of thing. It skews, it talks a lot about Cuban stuff um, in relationship to clave and himiola. Himiola, where this stuff is very present. Um, so, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, this book is great for you. It also has a lot of uh, cool um, audio references. It comes with a CD, so you can ch uh, hear the stuff that he's talking about in the book. So, let's start off with those visuals. So when we're talking about rhythm, I'm going to start off not getting into Western notation at all. We're just going to talk about ideas, cyclical ideas, and uh, patterns of numbers and things like that. So the first concept I want to talk about is the cyclical nature of rhythm. So as you see this design here, um, it creates this circle, circular pattern that repeats. And so everything we do is in reference to these four cardinal points. And there's a lot of symbolism if you get into some interesting like African uh, spiritualism, especially with Abaqua or uh, Santeria, Candomblé. The symbol has a lot of uh, significance into that. I'm not an expert on that, so I'm not going to talk about that today. But this is just a cool visual representation of the idea of the cyclical nature of rhythm. And this will be very applicable when we get into all the different stuff we're going to talk about. Um, and just as a reference as well, you're going to see me doing this sometimes if you're not too familiar with uh, Western European centric forms of counting. A conductor of an orchestra dictates the four beats this way. One, two, three, four, one. And so just so you know, if I'm counting things and you see me doing this, you have these reference points. The most important one, four, one, the downbeat, you just know that first down is your downbeat, beat one. All right, so let's go to this image right here, also taken from the clave matrix. Thanks again, David. Um, so this has that initial image of four beats flowing in a circle, that cyclical nature. Now the outer ring is dividing that into groups of three. So in total, looking at all the black and white uh, dots, it's kind of backwards in my vision, sorry. You're looking at uh, 12 hits all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's dividing these groupings into threes. And you're looking at four groupings of three to get all the way around that cycle. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. So you can kind of see this relationship of how they're divided up. And you can even subdivide it by just the black notes on the outside, or you can subdivide it by just the white notes. If we're counting here, two, three, two, two, three, the black notes are gonna come on every odd beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And it creates what we call the big three idea, where the small threes are one, two, three, one, two, three. If you're keeping this tempo, the big three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And you see that it lines up in this particular cycle. The big three lines up at the top and it lines up at the bottom. If you're looking at it like a clock, you see the black notes line up on one and then you line up on three down at the bottom. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So we're just setting up this idea that it can be divided into four, it can be divided into 12, it can be divided into all kinds of different ways. And the fun of rhythm is playing with those divisions in interesting and cool interlocking ways. So this is a little bit more abstract. We're kind of getting away from the circular idea, but this is showing if the, um, the white dots within the black uh, triangles, that's our big three pulse. 
One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And the black dots on the white notes are looking at that three pulse. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So if you're looking at trying to play both of these at the same time, this in particular is a very cool visual representation where you can literally see those subdivisions and how, say, if you're using uh, the top line as your right hand and the bottom line as your left hand, you can see where they line up, you can see where they alternate, and you can see those triangles representing each of those subdivisions in between. So if I was counting it, if we're counting to 12, ready, and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five. And if you isolate each hand, you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five. So the composite rhythm, the combination of these two ideas of the top being three and the bottom being two, because it takes three of those top notes to equal the same duration as the two bottom notes, creates this idea of two over three. And it, the lining up of it is kind of awkward, but it's kind of like that, where you go, the first one is together, you go bra, ka, tu, ka, bra, ka, tu, ka, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And this is stuff you can practice and check out at home. You can play on your chest, you can snap, you can play on your legs, um, just to get this idea of being able to play both triplets and eighth notes or duple things at the same time. And if you relate this to samba, the feel of samba, it's not exactly this idea of hemiola, but it's pretty darn close. It's one way of kind of quantifying that feel of samba that has that almost triplet feel, like, but somewhere kind of in between, which is what makes this really fun. The more you practice hemiola, the more you get used to drawing from triplets and duple ideas at the same time. If we're looking at the triplets are in the orange, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's outlining the place where we're tapping our foot. So we're gonna keep those divisions, keep the same space, but we're gonna accent every four notes instead of every three, while still tapping our foot every four. All right, try it out. One, two, three, four. 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 One.